Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. Welcome back to another Ghostbusters movie review in preparation for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire to come out. I think at the end of March, something like that. Anyway, I have a review here for Ghostbusters 2 from 1989, following five years after the 1984, what's considered to be a classic movie. Now, I myself, um, I, I don't love Ghostbusters 2. I don't think many people do. I think it's okay. I think it's fine, and I thought it was fine when I was a kid watching it sometimes, too. Ghostbusters 2 has so many good things about it, so many good returning elements, some new elements that I do like, and it has a lot of bad in there. I think the biggest thing about this film that really harms it the most, uh, to really kind of delve into it from the get-go, is that by the time this movie had come out, you'd had a couple of cartoons, I believe. I think there was more than one by this time. The first film was so popular that young boys loved that horror comedy element, and it kind of watered the IP down into being a toy-based franchise, into being a cartoon-based franchise, and therefore being a, basically a children's property, just like RoboCop eventually became by RoboCop 3. Um, and yeah, there was a RoboCop cartoon, just in case you don't know. Rambo had become that as well. There's a Rambo animated series. That happened with a lot of stuff that was popular back in the 80s, and it doesn't happen now, which is a shame. Anyway, um, this IP was kind of ruined by children, <laughs> to be honest with you. Despite Mr. Ivan Reitman coming back to direct once again, and I assume produce, and Mr. Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd not only returned to star in it, but also to write the movie. A lot of things, again, were done well, but there was a lot of other problems. Um, Bill Murray is back, Ernie Hudson is back with way more screen time as a Ghostbuster, which Ernie Hudson might be my favorite of all of them, so it was good to see him all the time, too. I love that man. I just watched another film with uh, Kiefer Sutherland, Woody Harrelson, and him in it. It was great. Anyway, uh, Sigourney Weaver, however, comes back, which was surprising. I didn't remember that. It's been like 10 years since I've seen this movie. And even Rick Moranis and Annie Potts come back, too, for a very weird take on Ghostbusters, but a very sensical beginning concept that kind of becomes a weird movie. Uh, where do I even start with this? Basically, after the events of New York City in the film five years previous to this, we also skip to five years ahead. This film takes place in 1989, and the Ghostbusters were ripped off by the mayor guy, or the guy running for mayor, whatever he was, uh, who was a politician at heart and screwed them over and took credit for every single bit of the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man's defeat at the end of that first movie. So he got glorified, he never mentioned the Ghostbusters, so not only did their credibility go out the window when all the paranormal ghost activity in the town of New York City began to go away after that first film's events, um, they got screwed and they have to file bankruptcy now. And poor, poor Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd have to do children's birthday parties and other odd jobs to try to make this thing last and try to make a new career out of all of this stuff because the Ghostbusters are officially, essentially, done. Um, Bill Murray and Sigourney Weaver had a breakup, and the film actually opens up with how she's already had a baby with a new guy and the carriage, the stroller or whatever that she's pushing her baby in around New York City gets possessed and runs away from her out into traffic and that baby almost becomes mashed potatoes, red mashed potatoes. And uh, it, it was not good. <laughs> so she's able to save her baby at the last second, but she takes him to what's left of the Ghostbusters, hoping that Peter Vinkman, Mr. Bill Murray's character, her ex-lover, doesn't find out and he does, he comes along. And a new adventure begins with the Ghostbusters now. Um, that eventually ties in Mr. Rick Moranis, the secretary Annie Potts, where they realize that there is a painting that Sigourney Weaver recently received at the museum she kind of works at, works at, excuse me, <clears throat> where she takes up old sculptures and paintings and stuff, kind of like in Wonder Woman, what Gal Gadot has to do. And uh, she has to polish them up and paint them and kind of date them, that kind of thing. There's this one painting that shows up that may have a tie to some new paranormal activity, um, that's very weird. It looks like David Carradine or like Bill Maher, <laughs> like a young guy with bright, long, white hair uh, and going bald, too. And uh, this character was named in the first film at one point, never shown, but mentioned by name, if I remember correctly, in that first movie from 84. And now, however, there is this new threat, very much in a TMNT 2 or a Power Rangers way, of some pink goo. Uh, some ectoplasm that happens to be running through the sewers in downtown New York City, or just through New York City as a whole, that may be beginning to bring back some spirits and some demons and whatever into the city, uh, causing and wreaking some new havoc that the Ghostbusters have to stop. And that's basically the long-winded way to say Ghostbusters 2 is kind of watered down. <laughs> 
it's not as scary as the first film was. When I was a kid, this film didn't creep me out the way Ghostbusters 1 did when I would watch it. And I never watched, as I said in my review for the first movie, I never watched either of these movies very much. I just never was a big Ghostbusters guy. Still am not to this day. Despite me being able to recognize and also appreciate that original film and its creativity, how well done it was, this film again just feels really watered down, mainly for children, which I think they don't understand the appeal of that first movie. It was scary and it was funny, and that's why young boys liked it so much. The cartoons may have nailed that, I've never seen one of those, but this movie, it watered it down, and that's kind of a bummer. But it's not a bad movie to watch. It's well made, it's well shot. Uh, some of the camera work, you could argue, is very similar to the work in the first film, and the creativity is there to do something different. And to be fair, to this day, I've never seen another film aside from the Pink Ooze correlations with Power Rangers and TMNT 2, I've never seen a correlation of any other movie in the horror, horror, comedy, whatever, communities, Make a movie like this that was so different from what it had. It still has a good budget, good effects, um, a good mixture of practical and CGI for the film, just like the original film. Even some stop-motion animation, but not as severely rough as that first movie had. It's just saying, it wasn't a perfect movie, just so you know, in case you're a big hardcore Ghostbusters defender. Um, but it has a great cast here, with sometimes even better performances than what you had in the original film, because now that Sigourney Weaver and her boyfriend, husband, whatever he was, broke up. Um, her and Peter Vinkman, this little subplot about them falling in love again was really fun. There's a scene involving, involving, excuse me, I can't talk, it's still too early in the day. There's a scene involving Peter and her baby and how he's kind of making fun of the baby's name and that was genuinely funny. This film is very funny to make up for the lack of scares, the lack of creepiness to it. Um, it has a lot of good jokes that I think are sometimes just as good as the original film's jokes, which is kind of nice. You know, it makes up for all of the, uh, the watering down of the IP, you know. But anyway, at the end of the day, I really don't have much more to say about the film aside from its soundtrack. There's a new song in here that I really love. I'm assuming it's also from Ray Parker Jr., Ray Parks Jr., whatever his name is, that made the Ghostbusters theme song. And of course, that returns as well a couple of times in the film, and it is fantastic. Really great song, as always. The Ghostbusters theme song is wonderful. One thing I did forget to mention in the previous review that I think needs to be said, I was thinking about this, you know, the proton packs and just the sound design in general surrounding those proton packs, especially in the first film, but here as well, the sound design amongst both films is really great for the proton packs. Have you ever noticed that? You ever noticed that even in 1984, when that first proton pack gets turned on in the elevator scene, the sound that switches on, it is incredible. That's one of the best sound design moments in history, in my opinion. I never even thought to mention that in my previous review, because I wanted to go ahead and get these up. But it happens here, too, and I noticed it a lot about how great the sound design is. It's almost a surround sound feeling for how beautiful that was. Um, Ghostbusters 2 really pulls it off in that department as well. And it's, again, it's a decent movie. It's not really a good movie. It's just fine. It's okay. And you could say it's good, I guess. But to me, it just has all of these um, things kind of, kind of on the back of its neck that kind of rough the movie up a little bit, if you will. Ghostbusters 2 is not an absolute classic in my opinion, but it is fun. If you like the original film or even love that original film like a lot of people do, this one's worth watching, I think. It's not like a 2016 offender, you know, it's nothing like that. It's fine for what it is. If I had to rate Ghostbusters 2 on a five-star basis, despite not being a hardcore fan of the franchise or even the original movie, like I said, I would probably give this about a, a fairly decent three out of five stars. Nothing too high, nothing too low. It's well made for what it is, and it has a good cast coming back, like I said. A lot of familiar people, a lot of familiar personalities that really make it fun here. Of course, even the uh, other Ghostbusters that I love, like Harold Ramis and Dan Aykroyd, they're fun. I love all of them. I love the whole cast here. It just wasn't enough to save this movie, I think. It tries, but it's not enough. So three out of five stars for me. Now, the big issue here is that <laughs> the next movie has to be what was called Ghostbusters 3 at one point. It's not really Ghostbusters 3, it's actually a straight out remake, despite what anybody tries to tell you, and despite the rebranding when it came to DVD called Answer the Call, which they still have not changed on IMDb and tried to call it that. 
This is called Ghostbusters 2016. That's what it was. That's what it always will be. It was considered a remake, not another multiverse situation. Nothing stupid like that. Stop trying to defend this piece of crap. But most people aren't defending this movie, just so you know. And I want to make it clear on one more point. Bill Murray is the reason we never got Ghostbusters 3, because he had a falling out with Harold Ramis, and it really harmed making a Ghostbusters 3. All of the ideas that were pretty much used to write the script for, or at least begin writing the script for, Ghostbusters 3 from Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis were used for the video game for back in the day in Xbox 360. Now, I watched a walkthrough of this back in the day from a YouTube channel called Mahalo Video Games, which is long gone. I think they quit forever ago. But I watched the whole game back in the day, and I loved it. And I bought a copy last year in 2023, and I really want to play it again at some point, so I might try to do that. I don't know if I'll have it done and be able to review it by the time the movie comes out, but I don't know when I can actually start this. I've been really busy with this channel and kind of some other projects and other channels I've been wanting to kind of uh, rebrand as well, like I rebranded this channel. So I'm not really sure how soon I can get to this video game, but I do want to make it clear, this is Ghostbusters 3. I don't care about Afterlife being called that. I don't care about Frozen Empire being called Ghostbusters 4 or 5 or whatever you want to call it. Technically in history, this will always be Ghostbusters 3 when it comes to films, but this is the heart and soul, the entire returning cast, the ideas used about the Ghostbusters going into hell. It is a great video game, and if you've not played it, you absolutely should. And like I said, I might not get to the game to review before this movie comes out, or even this year for that matter. I haven't really decided. But this was a great game from what I remember, and you're a newcomer into the Ghostbusters, the new fifth member of the group. You know, they're all still younger when this game was being made. I think it's a 90s video game, pretty sure, like taking place in the 90s. But it's really great. If you haven't played this, you owe it to yourself to check it out. Really, really good game from what I remember. And the story and the jokes and everything were just as iconic as the other two films. Um, so, this is the next review. Just wanted to put all that out there. So tune in for this review, and then Afterlife, and then eventually Frozen Empire at some point. And uh, I think Ghostbusters is popular enough that I probably will rank these films at the end of the series of reviews. I forgot to mention that in my previous review as well. So tune in for that in case you want to see a ranking of these films at some point once they're all done. Anyway... Thank you all for watching, guys. God bless you all. I'd love to hear everything you have to say about Ghostbusters 2 and the franchise down in the comment section down below. Are the cartoons any good? I've never seen them. I see them on Tubi listed all the time, and I've never taken the time to go watch one. So I'd love to hear all that down below, too, especially from you 1980s, 80s, excuse me, Ghostbusters fanatics. Anyway, thank you all for watching again. God bless you all again, and goodbye.